Welcome back to the channel guys. I'm Ben with Mechanized Cleaning Solutions and today we get the new vacuum truck. Let's have a look, it's pulling up right now. There she blows. All the way from Florida, getting offloaded. This one's a 2,000 galloner, 25,500 pounds of gross weight, so about 500 pounds below the CDL threshold. It's like the uh, the head driver's getting ready to flip his truck around so he can go put it right over here. Right, back in a minute. Oh, I got a good one for you guys today. Uh, this has been a long time coming and the timing is very good so uh today we took delivery of a new vacuum truck then uh took the leap oh there's jenny uh say hi jenny hi. say hi youtube there's my lovely wife <laughs> uh yeah we took a new vacuum truck today uh got it from the same place we got the first one hylia florida from a place called national truck center and uh yeah they turn them and burn them down there but um it was funny we were uh, I was messing around with this thing all day today. I got some footage of all that. I'm going to show you guys. See the new truck? This one's got dump capability, which is totally awesome. And uh, today, while we were doing that, boy, man, universe of horse of vacuum. No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, a company out in... Looks like we might send a team out to the oil fields in North Dakota to help a fueling company clean up a bunch of fuel pads. Uh, these ones are, like, huge. They're for, like, trucks and stuff. Uh, all the trucking, all the truckers out there, and the different equipment they use to provide us all fuel. These, some of these fuel pads are like a hundred thousand square feet, and uh, I think they are just having a hard time. They told me they were having a hard time finding somebody to clean these things, so uh, they reached out. They were super cool. They were like, "Hey, we'll pay your travel expenses. Can you put up a proposal to come out here and clean all our stuff?" Near as I can tell, I got to look more closely at this stuff, but it looks like it's going to be, I don't know, maybe two, three, four weeks of work for a couple of guys. And uh, I, I might normally shy away from something like that because it would really put a damper on our ops here. But uh, since we have this second truck, not a problem. So we're gonna look at this. This will be a lot of fun. Uh, nice little adventure. Uh, yeah, anyways, I'm uh, gonna stop yapping here in the office and uh, start cutting in this footage. Anyway, right, guys, enjoy. We'll talk soon. All right, here she blows. Oh uh, yeah. This is a 2021 International. And uh, right off the bat, just a couple of small issues. The uh, So we had this tank built with a big dump cylinder. This tank will tip up and make washing this thing out a lot easier because you guys know how much mud me pick up. But um, so the hydraulic controls are back here. There's a PTO pump pushing the hydraulic pump but let's see if we can see it. The low pressure return line, which is this hose right there, that upper of these two hoses on this red hydraulic pump is leaking hydraulic oil all over the ground. It looks like we lost about half our oil on the trip. That's issue number one, not a big deal. I went up and looked at it the uh it's the low pressure return hose which is just held on by a hose clamp versus the high pressure out which is not leaking so and the driver told me that uh, it's real typical when you take these uh, hydraulic systems and they're brand new through different climates they'll leak a little bit it's got to cinch up the hoses and uh the hose clamps and then the other issue is i found a leak on the axle hub oil leaking a little bit oil at the bottom of the hub seal here and I actually have one of these gaskets on the shelf Other than that, I don't see anything too wrong with it, but she's coming off the truck right now. Let's check her out. Nice. So this is a big win. This second truck is a huge step for us. Well, that guy just doesn't have any fear of pulling that thing off. Nice. Right on! That 
is the reason for this thing having lost almost all of its hydraulic fluid. There's a one inch return line where the hydraulic hose coming out of the pre or coming out of the PTO pump is sent back to the tank. That hose, which is a low pressure hose, has a clamp that's slightly too big on it. And what's happened is the ends of these two clamps have come together and bottomed out its tightening force before it got it tight enough to stop leaking. And it probably wasn't an issue in Miami where it was warmer, but then you probably went over the mountains and things cooled off a little bit and that's when it started leaking. So the only other issue that I'm aware of is that front leaky hub seal. And uh, these are not too bad to deal with. There's zip out six bolts and there's a little paper gasket. You put some silicone RTV and you're good to go. Put some more oil back in there. And as far as I know, that's uh, the truck is otherwise tip top. Oh, look at that. We got some PTO controls here, hoist on and off. That's amazing. So it looks like so we can power the PTO on here outside. We can rev up the truck outside so we can control the, the speed of the vacuum pump with these switches out here. And it looks like we can make it so that the hydraulic pump is turning and not turning while the PTO is also on because the hydraulic dump function and the vacuum function are controlled by the PTO. So looks like we have the ability to isolate those. That's pretty cool. Nice. I'll have to give those guys a call and ask them how to use this stuff. This should be pressure mode. That should be vacuum mode. Pretty cool. Pretty stoked. Well, guys, we got our second supporting vac truck. So this was important this year to do this because, uh, you know, look, mostly these trucks, we don't, we don't uh, run these trucks hard every day. That truck mostly, I wouldn't say mostly, by and large, that one right there sits there most days. But whenever we take on big projects, the vacuum trucks are crucial. They're also crucial to getting the trailers emptied out each day and resetting them. So for us, we're kind of fortunate that we need these big trucks, but we don't tend to put a lot of miles on them, except when things get crazy. So this was kind of a long time coming. I didn't really think we'd need to do a second truck for quite a while. But, um, you know, with what we've been doing all this year and needing to split teams, it was like, yeah, that was imperative. I didn't want to get into a situation where if that truck went down, the, one, the first one we had, we would have to shut down operations. So this truck will serve to help us grow when things get busy and help us increase our revenue within a given period of time so we'll be able to do more work. And then the other big benefit of having this second truck is that now we got a backup. So this was the one kind of weak logistical link at our operation was like, you know, what are we going to do if the vacuum truck goes down? There's really only one option. That is to hire another vacuum truck. And they are very expensive. So anytime that would happen, if that ever did happen, that would be a big financial hit. Uh, one we really couldn't sustain for any amount of time. It was like, you know, maybe a day or two. That would be an acceptable outcome. Otherwise our vac truck is like critical to our operations. And uh, if you wind up doing what we're doing, one of those things will be critical to your operations too. Unless you have your own disposal and decamp facility, like at your native business location, which we do not. And we have no chance of putting one here. That won't happen. We will not be able to build our own disposal facility until we like buy our own building and our own piece of property. <laughs> And all that jazz. So what that means in the meantime, vacuum trucks to help us move and separate and deal and organize our wash water. All right, guys, that's it for now. I got to go get some clamps just uh, so this thing doesn't leak any more oil on the ground. Cause a problem. I got a little spill cut underneath it right now and a piece of cardboard. But uh, I'm excited to go out and get this thing a little test drive and uh, play with the vacuum, see how it works hoist the tank up and down and we'll do uh we'll get some more clips of all that once i'm able to get to it all right enjoy all right guys 
been messing around with this good part of the day, looking for hydraulic fluid and got that clamp fixed, ready for a hydraulic dump function test. Although it's been tested, but I just want to play with it. Um, ready to fire this thing up. Pretty stoker rude. Let's go have a look around here. This uh, reservoir was just about empty there. I got it filled back up with some AW32. That stands for anti-wear viscosity 32 hydraulic oil is not super critical just as long as you don't mix kinds. All right, let's go see what happens here. Totally stoked about this dump function. You know, I've, I've jumped inside this tank in this truck for years. I've been washing it out. I, the way I have to do it is I go into the disposal facility. <laughs> I climb inside and get a big powerful wash gun and then squirt it out and shove it out the back. But uh, this one will be able to just basically stand in the back when this thing's up at an angle. We won't have to get inside this thing nearly as much and that'll save a lot of time. And I won't have as much mud on my face. <laughs> All right, let's fire her up. And this is totally cool. Just to get the pump going, you just turn this on. And the other truck, it's uh, you gotta go in the, in, the, in the driver's compartment, push on the clutch, flip a PTO valve up. This one, because it's an automatic, you don't have to do that. Well, I'm gonna lift it up halfway then go check the hydraulic oil. Wow, look at that. Totally clogged. Real curious to see how far up this thing goes. Oh, that's at least a two-stage cylinder. That's cool. Wow, this thing's got some angle on it. Let's step back and have a look here. Look at that shit. Totally cool. Let me go check the fluid level here real quick. shape in the bumper of course we'll be opening the hatch whenever it's up like this look at that man wow that is so cool man it's been a long time coming i've been dreaming to have a dump tank for years now ever since the first time I didn't know anything about vacuum trucks and I bought this one the first time I had to wash this thing out I was like oh I should have had a dump cylinder put on it and uh, I think back then it was like a it was like an eight thousand dollar option now it's a fifteen thousand dollar option so yeah. pretty cool Oop, looks like the cam levers hitting the bumper there that's an issue yeah. that's easy to fix we can take that cap and just rotate it 90 degrees and those levers won't hit. Man, it didn't want to come down. It's like stuck. I'm gonna have to fuck with this. Yeah, so it, uh, it got stuck at the top position. If you take this thing all the way up, the cylinder hits the tank and it gets snagged. I wasn't watching. But uh, when this thing goes all the way up, let me show you. Look up under there. In its very top position, the cylinder hits the tank right about there and it kind of gets, puts a little sideways pressure on the cylinder. So that's about as far up as it'll go, but that's plenty. Man, totally cool. Awesome. All right, guys. 
guys, vacuum truck number two is about ready to go in operation. Just got to put some hoses on it and then drop about $15,000 getting it registered and paying the tax and license and all that shit because we bought it in Florida, but we got to register in Washington. The dealership doesn't do all that shit. So yeah, check it out. Woohoo. See ya.